So before I bring him on board, uh, is somebody there to us? And, uh, you know, when I was in the university, these are the people that we look up to and um, they share with you resources. When you want to move to the next level, number one, you need information. Number two, you need tools and resources to move to the next level. And these are the set of people that I got in contact with. And um, most of the books that I read in my university days that helped me on leadership, that helped me on goal setting, that helped me to think ahead. These are the people that uh, have uh, I got access to and everything just changed. So it's going to be sharing from uh, Rwanda with us. And um, I will read this four five for us right now. Demilade Uluashino is a learning, innovation, entrepreneurship, and future of work consultant. As an educator, he has served as faculty programs, initiatives at the African University, ALU, in Rwanda for more than five years. At the institution, he initiated the led and led the digital economy program, including a collaboration with the Alibaba Business School, where he led his team to win the award of the leading institution of digital entrepreneurship for the institution at the Global Digital Entrepreneurship Challenge. He is also an adjunct faculty member for the Doing Business in African course with the African Business School, Morocco. He served as an entrepreneurship coach with the Innovation Creation Studios and is a mentor with Fonda Institute. He has consulted for trained and collaborated with local and international institutions, including African Business School, uh, UNC TAD, uh, University of Lincoln, Nebraska, Rwanda Institute of Conservation, Agriculture, and more. As a learning innovator advisor, he has co-led and advised on projects such as the University Partnership Exchange Initiative, sponsored by the U.S. Embassy, and the Leadership in Higher Education Program. He helped to create a toolkit for entrepreneurship program for a new university in Rwanda. He is the founder of Plan B Premium. Uh, the website is www.planbpremium.com an entrepreneurial pathway platform for the future of work and Learnable Global. Learnable Global website is www.learnableglobal.com. A learning innovation consultancy is the host and convener of the Learning Excellence and Innovation Conference, Lexicon Africa, and author of the Plan B Premier book. And today, I welcome to the um, Global Youth Summit for the first time. It will be coming on board to share with us global impact in leadership. I want to applause and a, a powerful and joyful ovation and welcome for Oluwa Shino Demilade. So I'm going to unmute him now so that I can have the flow. I think you can unmute yourself now. Oh. Okay, you can unmute yourself now. All right, I think I'm audible now. Can you hear me? Awesome, awesome, good to have you. Thank you so much. It's good to see you as well. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, Daya, thanks for having me. And like you were saying, the we related several years ago. I think it's about 12, 10 or 12 years ago now at the Obafemi Aolo University. And it's such a pleasure to have interacted with you and to still know you 
uh, today and to witness the amazing work that you're doing and to be part of this. And uh, good afternoon to this audience. Um, if you can hear me, please just put a yes in the chat box. If you can hear me, I want to know that we are interacting. Please put a yes in the chat box. Awesome. I see David Elijah. I see Chinaze. I also want to appreciate my wife and very good friend, Chinaze, who is also joining us on this call. Um, she's right now in Rwanda. I happen to be in Nairobi, Kenya, for some other engagement and some other work. And so it's great to be joining you from uh, Nairobi, Kenya today. And in the next few minutes, I know that you all were talking about uh, business and loans and stuff. And I know that when people are talking about money, people pay a lot more attention when people are talking about money, right? I'm, I'm also a business person. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneurship coach. I serve with the Founders Institute, uh, mentoring startups and advising startups, but also uh, do my own business and uh, mentor startups from a number of different uh, platforms. Recently, we concluded the Africa Future Work and Entrepreneurship Summit, which we held in Rwanda and attracted uh, participants from several countries, Germany, the US, um, Cameroon, Nigeria, and a number of other places um, in Rwanda. So I understand people want to talk about money importantly, but I want to shift the lens a bit because I won't talk a lot about money right now. We'll be talking more about leadership. And um, whether you, like, I, I'm not going to put the words in your mouth. I was going to say whether you like it or not, you, you know, but I'm going to start with asking you a question and it's a quick question for me. Um, the, the first thing is, are you, do you consider yourself a leader and are you a leader? But while we think about that, while you talk, while you take time to think about that and maybe put an answer in the chat for me. So my question for you is, are you a leader and what makes you a leader? But while you think about that, I wanted to say, like Dio was saying earlier on, right now, while I'm based, a lot of my work is based in Kigali, I consider myself to be a global citizen and a global change maker. I have lived in a number of countries across the globe, but also worked, done business and interacted or served in a number of other countries. I think close to 15 countries now that I've been opportune to go do work in from the Middle East to Southeast Asia, to the U.S., I uh, served clients in the UK and worked pretty much around Africa. And so the things that I'm talking to you about, I'll be trying to share as much as possible a personal experience and sharing perspectives on what has helped me to add value as a leader. And I'll be sharing a lot from that. As Dyer said as well, I worked with the African Leadership University. So I've been in the space of leadership development for quite a number of years, maybe about 10 years doing corporate trainings, but also teaching uh, business school, teaching undergraduate programs, and also working with corporates, teaching uh, programs or, or training and leadership really programs. Hopefully today, um, something that I, what I have to share with you will be impactful for you as you think about your own leadership journey. So my first question, and I want you to put this in the chat if you're still with me, do you consider yourself, are you a leader and what makes you a leader? Let's do a quick interaction in the chat. Just help me put a yes or no and what makes you a leader so that we can get into talking about uh, today's topic. We're talking about making global impact in leadership. I want to believe that this is not the first time that you're hearing about leadership. In fact, what I realized is that leadership has sometimes even been overflowed. Right, And it has been taken away from the simple, powerful, effective way that it is to something that some people think is outside their reach or feel that it is only for a select few. In fact, there is no better time to be talking about leadership than the eve of the elections in Nigeria, where we are trying to elect new leaders. And if you're a Nigerian, you would agree with me that nowhere that Nigeria is the court, everything rises and falls 
on leadership. True, right? Right now, the inefficiencies, the challenges, the reality that we see in Nigeria is a is is a testament. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And if everything was, it means everything. It means our businesses. It means our family. It means our ability to make money and all that. So this is critical for us this afternoon as we are talking about this. So please help me put in the chat, are you a leader and what makes you a leader? I see some responses. I see yes, yes. And then I see Anna to uh, Ephraim Bauer say, yes, ability to influence, give guidance, and exemplify. So ability to influence others, to give guidance and exemplify makes you a leader. I see Sonia Adigun say, yes, because people are motivated to follow me. And that's a good word. Why are people, you know, the next question I want to ask you is, why are people motivated to follow you, right? Asemi says, my influence to make people what they want to ordinarily would not do is what makes me a leader. That is, you are able to move people, right? And that, that's what makes you a leader. Um, David Elijah says, ability to influence, branding, healthy relationships, and being a go-getter. So again, we're seeing some important characteristics that are defining a leader. Somebody says accountability, that's from Uche Dorothy. And then we see Dangana Abubakar who says, Ability to work with people to bring about positive change. Powerful, powerful stuff. Trust me. It lives up to this every global impact in leadership, right? And to start us off today in just talking about some of the things that we've started to chat about, I'm going to play a quick video for you, and that will help us to dive into the rest of our discussion. I'm going to play a quick video for you, share a story with you as well, and talking a little bit about myself, and then we will dive into some of the practical things that you can do to create global impact as a leader. All right, let me make sure I think I have to reshare this just to make sure that uh, the sound is also shared. Okay, some of you might have seen this video before, but if you have never seen this video, this is a very instructive video called The Tree uh, from Lead India. And after this video, I'm going to ask you what what out for you what did you take away and what was your greatest lesson? Okay. सर आपके लिए उस पार कार का इंतजाम किए थे सर आइए सर ये ये चल 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 सी जाने बूंदे आए जाने कैसा दर्द लाए सामने क्या है ये तेरे क्यों रुका है तू बता दे ओ कौन तुझको पार लेगा कौन होगा वो मसीहा से तू ढूंढता है वो ही है तू तू वही है तुझ में तेरा रास्ता है तुझ में तेरा है सहारा तू ही तुझको पार लेगा तू ही है तेरा किनारा I'm 
उठता है तुझ पे तेरा है सहारा तू ही तुझको पार लेगा तू ही है तेरा किनारा Right. I hope that you were able to watch that video. Um, if you did not get it, you can ask me to play one more time. But if you were able to watch it, I want you to put in the chat what did you take away from watching that video, or if you were to define leadership from watching that video, how would you define leadership? Let's let's uh, let's put it in the chat real quick, and um, I ask that you. Indulge me. I'm going to be asking you to put stuff in the chat and just respond because I don't want to be the only one talking all through the entire period. I want to hear from you. Also, if you want to share something, I think the host can unmute you. So, if you want to share something and you don't, you're not able to put it in the chat. You can ask the host to unmute to just raise up your hand. I put up the emoji, right? Otherwise, let me see your comments in the chat from watching that video. Don't forget, we're talking about global impact in leadership. How do you make global impact as a leader? All right. Ability, Anato says, ability to get people to act and do the right thing that is beneficial to all. Russell says, leadership is being an active participant. And Uluwako says, taking responsibility. You know, Asemi says, taking initiative to solve common problems. Zainab says, the boy led. As a leader, one must have the ability to lead and put in more effort. This is great. So there's a number of keywords that are coming at leading by example. Allow us in, Aisha says, leading by example. Be willing to go the extra mile. True leadership is one that inspires action, ignites others to take action and lead themselves. Thank you, David Elijah, for saying that. Carrying people along, Sandy Adigu says. Now, as you look at that video and people continue to put your comments in the chat, you will notice a number of interesting things. It was not the most powerful person that took action. It was not the wealthiest person that took action. It was not the person with the greatest position that took action. It was not the person that was born to the wealthiest family. It was not the person that was born with an advantage or with a silver spoon, as we will say, that took the action that needed to be taken. It was an ordinary, what you will call an ordinary little boy. You know what that says to me? It says that leadership can come from anywhere. Leadership can happen anywhere. Anybody can lead. Any one of us has the ability to make a difference. If we consider leadership making a difference, creating a change in our lives or in the environments around us and serving other people, anybody can do it. Aladiel, allow me, says, being the first to take action even after discussing the problem. That's a good one, Aladi, allow, allow, allow me. How many times have you and I seen problems around us and said, you know what? This is not my own problem. This is not my headache. Let me just face my business. Let me take care of myself and my family. We will be all right, right? If you look at the, 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 the situation, some of the things that we face around us today, people say, I'm just going to mind my business and we'll be all right. But the truth is that, those situations become so big that they begin to affect even us. You know, Dangana Ababaka says, a little boy took action and brought about the change, despite knowing he cannot do with the Lord, but also believing people will, 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 will join him. Nice video. Thanks, Ababaka, for mentioning that. You can go watch this video again and you can see it. Now, the truth about the issue is that, like this video, Every day, there are people around us that take action to make the lives of people better, to bring about change in their community. The question is, will you be counted among the number of change makers or are you counted among the number of change makers? Because you see, every one of us has 
a destiny. Every one of us has a contribution to make here. For that little boy, the contribution he had to make in the moment was actually to go up to that tree and be a symbol of hope. So sometimes what you do is not even because you're able to solve the problem, but because you, you, what you do generates awareness for other people to become part of the solution or to attend to the solution. Many times we start our projects, we start our change projects, not even having the resources or not even being able to change them, but just the courage to start brings other people to come to us. And bring, I, I can't tell you how many times this has been the case for me when we've done some of our work. You know, like Dale was saying, there are two major conferences that we do every year here in Kigali that are global events that bring people from all over the world to Rwanda. First one is Learning Excellence and Innovation Conference, which is more for people in the field of learning, right? Universities, higher institutions, and upskilling organizations. And we do that, we bring a number of people from all over the world. And I remember when we were starting the first edition of that, it comes as an idea, right? And I'll tell you a bit more about some of the strategies in, in just deploying that. But it, is, it started as an idea and we wanted to bring people together to shape the future of learning. You know, I went to a traditional university, the one that Diana and I were talking about. And I remember, Many of the things that we did involved either attending lectures early, taking notes. I studied animal science in my first degree. And, you know, at the end of the day, I can't remember if I've ever used what I studied. I'll be honest with you. Maybe the relationships I made, like the one that I, we, I have with Dyer today, maybe that was one of the things of a value of bringing to university and doing all that. But in terms of the subject matter, it wasn't always a thing for me. And you hear many people talk about the fact that their learning was theoretical. Their learning wasn't necessarily something that has added so much value to their lives. So for me, I'm passionate about how we transform education and learning to be something that really impacts people and equips them to be problem solvers for society. And so that's why we do Lexicon Africa. And so as I was saying, we started Lexicon Africa with the vision to bring together people. And so Lexicon Africa today has brought together people from different countries or from all over the globe. But it started with an idea. And from that idea, there came support, there came people interested in it. Because guess what? There are people all over who also see the problem that you see. You see the video of that guy. There are people who saw the problem. There are people that are inconvenienced by it. But many times, everybody is waiting for someone to start. Everybody is waiting for somebody to take a step. But the question today that I want to ask you, are you the one taking that step? There's another video I have here, I will not play it, but maybe when I share the slides with you, you can watch it. This is a story of a boy called William Kakwamba. It's a, it, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a movie on it on Netflix. It talks about the boy who honest the wind, talking about how this guy was able to create solutions for his community that was... Uh, that, that was being affected by low productivity by tapping into ingenuity and uh, and creating a, a windmill and a series of windmills now that are powering the community. Like I said, I would not play this because of our time. Now, this is this guy that is speaking to you across and, and just to, 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 to use one of the case studies um, that I put in my bio, um, two years ago, I led a team of 13 people to win a prize called the, the, the Leading Institution of Digital Entrepreneurship Education from several countries across the globe. We were working and collaborating with different countries, but also we were responsible for cultivating out of, from, from across the continent, we, we got in more than 600 startups that we were working with. But eventually, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I see audio is low. Can you hear me now? Is it better? We can hear you. Okay, great. Somebody said it, audio is low. So I was telling you this, this was a global award. This was a global endeavor. This is me, perhaps 10 years ago on the left with some of my little steps. I didn't always start making 
global impact. I started out in my little corner. In fact, I remember during my youth service, I used to have, I used to teach young people in a school called World Bank Secondary School in Umwai. I served in Abia State. And I remember I would go to the streets on Saturday and I would go call young people and I would go teach them about leadership. Now, why do I put this here? To show you that if you are starting anything, there is a progression in leadership and it evolves. So you must believe in yourself, number one, but you must also take the first steps. And those first steps, those steps that you're taking are seeds to get you to a place that's greater. But this same person that 10, 11, 12 years ago was teaching kids in a broken public school class is the same person that has the, today the privilege to stand on global stages, to win global awards, right? To create global impact, to be interviewed by global leaders and icons. I, I did an interview two weeks ago with somebody in Alabama who is a renowned leadership uh, uh, person I call the Eagle Leadership Center. And you know, they said they were just enthralled by my story and my work and my impact. But how do you get to that point? How do you begin to, what are the qualities of making global impact in leadership, right? How do you do what we were able to do as a team and win a global prize in leadership? I will share some of that with you. Now, as I said, two things is, leadership is not a fixed thing. It can happen anywhere and every day. It happens when somebody recognizes a gap and steps up to feel the need. So right where you are, if there is a gap, if there's a problem, you can lead. Now, in breaking down some of the practical strategies of, of leadership, I haven't shared a bit of those stories with you. There are three core things on which leadership rests, which I consider the foundations of leadership. The first one is the ability to lead yourself, right? The first one is the ability to lead yourself. The second one is the ability to lead others. And the third one is the ability to create change. Every other thing that we're talking about leadership in terms of leadership skills, in terms of leadership abilities, in terms of leadership practices are boiled into these three things. If you remember these three things, and if you make sure that you have the skills and you're continuously coordinating around this, you can make change as a leader. The first one is leading yourself. The second one is leading others. And the third one is creating change. At the center of this is the sweet spot of the impact that you're going to make. Now, what is leading yourself? It all starts with self-leadership. We can talk about, and you know, earlier on, we were talking about the fact that people follow us and are inspired by us when they were, when, and that is the proof of leadership. But guess what? People can follow you and be inspired by you, but you might still be a failure. You might still be, for lack of better words, a private failure. That is, you might find it that you are not fulfilling, either fulfilling your true purpose, mission, vision, or you are failing in your own character even though people are following you on the outside. Now, you've heard, we have heard a lot of stories where there is a failure in leadership. Usually, we give somebody a position, and because they're in a position, they're out there. And because everybody likes the spotlight, likes the limelight, we see the person in the spotlight as a leader. We see them as making impact, but we don't know what is happening with them privately. Then one day it happens, we hear a story that this person was in a fraud, was investigated for fraud, for example, or this person was investigated for immorality, for example. Now, every one of us has strengths and we have weaknesses. Our ability to channel both is what leading yourself is about. Our ability to leverage our strengths, but our ability to also manage and diminish our, weakness, diminish our weaknesses. 
is what being able to lead yourself is about. So it starts with leading yourself. The quality of leadership that you give to other people is the quality of leadership that you give to yourself. You can lead other people better than you lead yourself. You might try in certain areas, but the truth about the issue is that you, your external leadership is a result of the personal leadership that you have. It was Plato that said this, and you can see it on the slides. The first and best victory is to conquer yourself. Think about it. In whatever you're doing, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a positional leadership, whether it's your business, if you are unable to discipline, to manage, to drive yourself, to undo yourself, that thing would always end up in failure. Now, as I'm speaking to you, think about any personal failure that you that you have experienced. Now, let's be honest with ourselves, right? It's easy to say it's the situation around us that causes the failure. Yes, sometimes there are things outside of our influence. There are things that we cannot control that causes the failure of a project or a personal failure. But when you remove the things outside of yourself uh, as, as, that, that are coming from the outside, ask yourself, what part did you play in contributing to that failure? What lack of self-discipline? What lack of following through? You know, many times we look at things and you know, that thing could have succeeded if I took an extra step, if I gave myself, if I did not, instead of complaining, I instead took action. So this leading yourself is not is something that, oh, you're, it's, the, it's about the man or the woman in the mirror. You're the only one who can tell yourself the truth about it. If you don't lead yourself well, you know it. So you owe it to yourself. Listen to me. You owe it to yourself to lead yourself well. Can you put that in the chat box? In the chat box, I owe it to myself to lead myself well. Because the first and the best victory is to conquer self. Let's put it in the chat box. I owe it to myself to lead myself well. We're talking about leadership. The first step is leading yourself. And a number of things under leading yourself, I'll just walk through, but you can take a look at this later. What is, who am I? Do I genuinely know myself? Do I genuinely know what I represent? Do I genuinely know what I stand for? Am I just chasing things that everybody else is chasing? Am I chasing achievement, money, or position because every other person is chasing it? What is my identity? Where am I from? The core questions, because you see, your confidence, the ability to lead yourself, and the ability to be able to make an influence and other starts with your own settled sense of identity. I don't want to go a ton into it today, but if you think about African identity, you realize that when an oppressor wants to destroy the productivity and the ability of the people, one of the first things that they attack is their sense of identity. And that's why Africa's heritage, that's why Africa's resources, Africa's sense of identity was plundered and corroded. And today it still puts many Africans in a place of subservience and slavery. Go and check it anywhere in the world where you find people that feel like they are unable to contribute globally or that feel like they are recipients. That is, they are not the ones initiated or given. It's from a sense of identity that has been corroded. So as a leader, if you're going to do a great job of global impact and leading others genuinely, I'm not saying just doing stuff, but I'm saying a, 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 an impactful work. The first place you start with is answering the questions, who really am I? I'm a Christian. And so I go to the Bible when I talk about some of these examples. You see Jesus asking many of his disciples several times, who do men say I am? Who am I? And if you look at the Bible, and permit me, if you're not a Christian, I'm using it for illustration right now. There are many places where Jesus Christ is saying, I am this. 
I am this, just to emphasize his sense of identity. And if you look at any leader in our world, if you talk about leaders that have made true impact, you will find one thing about them is a clear sense of identity. Because out of knowing genuinely who you are is where your impact flows, that is what differentiates you from every other person. That is what makes you confident even if 50 people are doing the same thing, you being able to step out and do it in your own way and with your own color is a conviction of your unique identity. It's a conviction of the fact that you bring a difference to the table. You know, it has been proven. Uh, some prints, our identities are unique. There is no single person. So is your contribution and your impact. Now, the other thing is self-awareness. Self-awareness is, is an extension of identity, knowing who you are, knowing your source, knowing where you are from, knowing what you're made of. But self-awareness is also, do I know my, my reactions, my strengths, my weaknesses, my tendencies as a person? Many people study things in school. They study about making money. They study about everything, but they never study themselves. And so you find out that people that do things that you are surprised, that how did this person do this? Sometimes it's a sleep in the awareness of that person. They don't know who they are. And so a lack of self-awareness makes us to act in ways that are not in our best interest. A lack of that emotional self-awareness. Self-awareness is one of the key components of emotional intelligence, according to Daniel Goleman, right? And self-awareness means knowing your own emotions, knowing your own tendencies. That is critical so that you are not screaming on your employees, screaming at your kids, you, you know? And being able to manage those is critical. Values and character are critical. What are your values? What do you stand for? It's very easy in this world to move with the collective, but well, what do you stand for? Whether it's popular or not, that is where it starts from. There are many inventions, many great things today that people that were not popular were the source of those inventions or the thing was brought about when it was not very popular. But then that is the strength to be able to stay with your conviction, which comes from your values. What is your purpose? I don't want to go into it. But it's a question for you. Why are you here? Right? Why are you here? You know, it was Miles Moreau who said something. It says, where the purpose of the thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. As a leader, if you don't have a sense of purpose, you're not only just going to abuse yourself, you're going to abuse the people that you say you have impact on and follow. So it's important for you to understand what is the why. Simon Sinek said, great leaders ask why. That is the purpose. What is driving? What is purpose? What's your personal vision? Where are you trying to get to? Vision is such a powerful force. Vision aligns your life. Vision of where you want to be in 30 years. I know sometimes we can't see past. We just want to, we just want to survive for today. We want to survive for tomorrow. But you see, a force that is going to stabilize your life and give you consistency is a vision. And if you've been working with a vision, the likelihood that your life is stable, because everybody, mark my words, is going to go through ups and downs. But a vision and is going to give you a sense of direction, it's going to give you a sense of consistency, it's going to give you a sense of alignment. You know, we're starting a new year. People come up with goals and resolutions. But beyond the goals and resolutions, check if you already have a vision, go and look at it again. Let it burn in your heart. Let it motivate you. Whether your, business, whether your vision is starting the chain of businesses, whether your vision is being you know, a neurosurgeon, a global impact maker, whether your vision is being a leader in the political space in Nigeria, have that vision clear for yourself. It's critical. It's critical. Responsibility, of course. There's no responsibility and initiative. There's no leadership without responsibility. Somebody said so. I believe you take initiative. And habits and growth. Our habits make us, 
right? The things that we do consistently result in who we are today and your growth, of course, is a result of your habits, but also a result of your own investment in yourself. These are some things on personal leadership, but you agree with me, it's critical. John also said this from time ago, I heard this from John Maxwell, he said, you really cannot lead people if you need them, you know? need them. What it meant is that if you are the kind of person who needs people to validate you all the time, or who is driven by the opinions of other people, it's going to be hard for you to lead. So personal leadership is starting from a place of conviction. Of course, you need to work with people, collaborate with people. But we are saying that if you need them in the sense that you don't have your own genuine conviction or your own genuine perspective about an issue, it's hard for you to be a leader. So you must do the work of really clarifying, what do I think? What is my perspective on, on issues? What do I care about? These are critical questions for personal leadership. Talking about leading others. Now, people have talked about influence and inspiration. You know, this was something I heard as well. I can't remember who I heard it from. It says you reach a point of personal effectiveness, which you can't go below beyond the point of personal effectiveness until you learn how to accomplish with and through others. There are many things I've done in my life today. I will be honest. If it were me, if it were just me, there's no way I'd have been able to do them. Anybody who is doing anything significant in the world knows that it takes a coalition, knows that it takes the concerted intelligence and energy and collaboration of other people. So if you are a person who either still thinks that you are super in your own abilities or you have not learned how to work with people, there will be a limit to your impact and your effectiveness. We're talking about global impact. Think about yourself seated somewhere if there are no platforms, if there are no channels, if there are no people that can help you extend what you do, then your effectiveness will be limited. Now, let me say this. There are people that are doing amazing things in a little corner. It just, what they just need is an ability to be able to collaborate with somebody else to scale the impact of that work. It's local at the moment. But what's going to make it global, the bridge in between, is the ability to build collaborative relationship that will scale the impact. And so how do you do that? You build the ability to influence and inspire people. Somebody said, when we're talking about the definition of leaders, and the person said that I am able to move people to do what they will ordinarily not do, of course, not by coercion but by influence and inspiration. That is, people were not going to do that thing, but they like the outcome. So now as a leader, you are able to influence them. And influence is a skill, you know? According to Robert Caldini's six principles of influence, you learn about the different things, about, um, about liking, about social proof, and, and all that. There are different things that make influence. And you... Every one of us must learn how to influence people. Now, when I'm talking about leadership, I'm talking to you not from an ins- not just an inspirational thing. I'm talking practically. I'm saying that if you want to do fundraising and you want to lead others, you have to be able to influence. I'm saying that if you want to carry out an initiative or a project or you want to run a business or you want to build something meaningful, you have to be able to influence others. And this is not inspiration. I'm, I'm not just talking... To, to inspire you, I'm saying that influence is a skill set. Learning how to listen to others, learning how to understand what do people want, learning how to be able to be a person that they like and trust, you know, learning how to demonstrate competence in a way that other people are able to follow you. It's a critical, some of the things that are so serious, they're very tangible, just like any other thing. So leading others starts with influence and ability to inspire others. Leading others starts with being able to put yourself in their shoes, right? Because that's the, that's the, that's the foundation of relationship building. That's the relationship of team building. If we're going to build anything, if we're going to build anything, of course, 
we have to realize that it takes teams. It takes teams. So one thing I want you to think about as you're setting your goals for the next year, as you're setting your, what are the teams that you're going to call up? Who are the people that are going to be part of your teams and that you're going to collaborate with? And I want to say this, I'm not talking about, when I'm talking about leading others and team building, I'm not talking about bringing everybody under your roof, hiring everybody. No, that would be a limited way to think about it. You can bring people under your roof. You can hire people in the sense that you can be an employer of labor and that can be your team. But also, you're, who are going to be what I would call your strategic partners or your collaborators. So for every goal that you're setting, one of the things you need, apart from the resources that you will need for those goals, one of the things that you think you need to be thinking about is who are the people I'm going to collaborate with? What are the new relationships? Now, those relationships might not exist. What are the new relationships I'm going to have to build or going to have to start building to make this work? And you have to be very specific, tangible about it. That is putting it down there. I'm thinking of my own goals. I'm thinking of some of the big projects, massive projects that I have to do next year. They've started as an idea, you know? And usually when I start some of those things, I... Put, I put out the concept, I put out, and then I begin to share with people. I think when I entered there, I was talking about um, a strategy to, to, to get buy-in from people and to get resources from people, where he says it puts out the, the, the concept and then it puts a, what's a need for them, you know? And then you share it with people and then they buy into it and you convince them. It's leading others. That's, a, that's leading others. It doesn't get any, any deeper than that. It's about leading others. So who am I collaborating with? And so put that tangibly in your plan. If you want to scale the impact that you're going to make next year, and guess what? If you want to scale that impact to be global, then find the global connections. Find you, and maybe you already have them at some level, but find additional global connections that are going to make it possible for you or that are going to make it possible with you and, and identify them and write them down. Okay? Of course, like I said, the, the other thing here is shared vision and value. So if you're leading others, you have to understand this. Sometimes people think that this concept of shared vision means that even though you are the one starting with the vision, you have to allow other people buy into the vision and you have to allow them shape or contribute to it. If you hold the vision and you expect that I'm going to hold the vision, I'm the only one responsible and I'm going to give it to people, there's going to be a limit. You're only going to find people that can accommodate that. But it becomes even more impactful when people are able to get into the vision and they are good and they're able to contribute their part. That's a concept of shared vision and shared value. The truth is most of us are by nature selfish. We are always asking what's in it for me. So the truth is if you are going to be a part of anything, whether you're volunteering or not, there's a, there's a reason that you are being a part of that. And as, and as when you're engaging others, you have to understand how do I make sure that what we are building touches on value? I will tell you for, for sure, when it comes to global collaboration projects that I do with people, the first thing we're talking about is mutual value. That's the first thing we're talking about. How can this create value for you? Because I know once it creates value for them, they are committed to making it work. But if we, or if you, or the individual is only focused on the goal and the vision for themselves and the value, and you're not thinking about the value for the other person, you're going to spend a lot of time by yourself and you're going to wonder, why are people not even, this is a great thing, why are people not pursuing it? Why are people, you have to be skilled in the ability to generate value for people, to generate mutual and shared value for people. So you must step outside of your own value and then think about how can I respond to the value of others and create value of others for other people. I'll move along. Now, the final thing here is creating change. 
Thomas Sankara said you cannot, you, you must carry a fundamental. Unfortunately, some of our, you know, I let me not go again into African history, but if you know Thomas Sankara, you probably know what he stood for. And he said this, he says, you cannot carry out fundamental change without a certain amount of madness. It's the comes from non-conformity, the courage to turn your back on old formulas and the courage to invent the future. The third part of making leadership impact is creating change. And it starts with being able to identify problems, being able to create solutions, being able to marshal resources, implement those solutions, make those solutions viable. And this is a skill set again. These are skills. Do I know? Do I know how to identify problems? You know, people are asking, even in business, what are the problems around me I can solve? You have to know how to identify problems. Identifying problems meaning it means being in a beginner's mindset. Many of us are used to problems around us, so it's hard for us to see problems that we can leverage on. But when I say identifying problems, please. I'm talking about identifying problems, what solving. I'm not talking, about, we already have a lot of problems and there's a perspective that people have to problems and say, problems are making us inconvenient and all that. And you know, if you are in Nigeria or if you're anywhere, there's probably a lot of problems that you can see, but I'm talking about how do you identify problems that you can solve and create value out of? How do you get to the root cause of the problem? That is, every problem has a root cause. And for the person that solves the problem, there is a greater reward. You will agree with me that even in uh, Nigeria as a country, for example, um, there are people that, in spite of the situations, are able to leverage those same situations and are able to create solutions and to create profit and create value out of it. So it's about a mindset about how we approach problems and how we create solutions, right? And the other skill, of course, is how do we get resources? How do we get resources to be able to, resources might mean money, but it might also mean resources in kind, anything that helps you to accomplish a product or a project. I'll move on from this. I'm gonna take the next eight to 10 minutes and then I'm gonna see what questions. So what I'm gonna ask is if you have any question, please drop that in the chat box. I'm gonna finish this section shortly in the next eight, 10 minutes, and then we're going to have a conversation. So if you have any questions or thoughts, I want to see if you guys are still with me. If you have any questions or thoughts, um, please put them in the chat box. Let's have a, a conversation. So just talking about the texture of global impact and leadership, it's leading to, and just extending on what we said earlier, it's really about leading to create change or solve problems that have global impact, or create collaborating globally to solve problems and create value, All right? So it's really about bringing the global component or global perspective, solving problems beyond what is our own thing. What is, our, what is in our immediate area, but having a global uh, impact of the problem. There are seven things that I've identified in my own journey, but I've also looked at leaders and I will walk through this quickly and you'll get the slides for this as well. Global impact. If you're making global impact in leadership, there are seven things. First one is the courage. The second thing is the cause. The third thing is the coalition. The fourth thing is the competence. Fifth thing is the character. The sixth thing is the coordination and number seven is conditioning. And to say the courage, if you're going to take, if you're going to make global impact, it takes courage. Let's not deceive ourselves. It takes heart to step out of your immediate environment, especially to step out of what you're used to. To talk to people whose language you don't understand, whose environment you don't understand. And this is whether you are living, you know, because it doesn't mean, it doesn't, you could be living anywhere in the world. You could be living in the UK, you could be living in the US, in Canada, in South Korea, in Japan. But the ability to be able to stand up and to make a difference on a global scale, it takes courage. Courage comes from convictions and it's a choice and courage grows stronger with action. 
Courage does not guarantee that you're going to succeed. But guess what? Courage guarantees that you truly live. And you are the one who knows what is driving your life or what is limiting your impact. The question I have for you is, which of these forces is driving your life? Courage or fear? It's usually one of the two. Fear can make you minimize your dreams and just squeeze it and just make it manageable for you. But it takes courage to expand. It takes fear to constrict, but it takes courage to expand. The second thing, like I said, is the cause. To bring people together globally, there has to be a cause. You can't just rise, you can't just go out there and say, I want to do something. What is the problem? What is the cause? Right? The quote here says, we fail more often because we solve the wrong problem than because we get the wrong, wrong solution to the problem. The cause must be a problem that is relevant to people outside that space. For example, if you say that you're going to solve a problem and it's only about providing water to people in your community, the likelihood that you are going to find people to collaborate with you globally will be very low. But if you take on a problem that impacts people, if you take on a cause that impacts people beyond their immediate location, right? Like I was telling you about changing learning and education systems. One of the things that we are working on that brings people together globally, it's a cause that people care about, right? And so being able to do that, not only for our immediate location, but finding how can we transfer ideas and resources and people and connect them globally, makes more people want to be interested on a global level. So what is the scale? What is the scope of the impact? What is the strategic importance? When I say the strategic importance, globally, how important is this issue? You know about the 21 SDGs, for example. And today we talk about mainstreaming what you're doing through the 21 SDGs because the 21 SDGs is global language. So for example, if you're leading a cause or trying to make an impact in an area, does it anchor, is it strategically connected to some of those goals that are global language or global goals? Because that's how you then make the cause relevant to other people because it's touching on issues that affect people broadly. So you must determine that what you're solving is beyond your immediate area. Coalition, it takes a coalition. When I talk about the coalition, I'm not just talking about the team. I'm talking about what are the different strategic stakeholders. When we do the stakeholder analysis around here, you're going to find there are people who will be your sponsors. There are people who will be your team on the ground. There are people who are going to be the beneficiaries. There are people who are going to be your lobbyists. There are people that are going to introduce you. There are people that are going to play different roles. And you must understand that in making global impact, you have to build your coalition. You have to know what certain people can do in different areas. Sometimes the people that you get money from are not the same people you get advice or you will get introductions from. And so you must understand that creating global impact takes a coalition, a global coalition. And that's why I was saying earlier on, I just setting goals for the new year, for example, what is the coalition? So how are you going to bring people on? What are you going to get? And one thing I want to say is that we're going to make global impact. Begin to build your coalitions before you meet them. Many of the people that will create impact today, I remember we just did some, we just did an impactful um, Africa Future Work and Entrepreneurship Summit. And I remember one of the guys that was very instrumental to this, especially brought in some funding, was a guy two or three years ago who had worked on a project or that I had provided some support for. And this guy says that, you see, he told me when we were starting this project, he said, even if it's to come and carry chairs there, just tell me, I'm going to do it. And this guy was, he was critical to marshalling people, to marshalling resources, to creating something bigger than all of us. And that's why I said, build your coalitions before you need them. Invest into people. 
be a contributor because those people are going to form the coalition. There's a lot of practical ways. You know, if you, if you, I know people here exist on different spectrum. There are people that are maybe already having some global impact, but some people are trying to break into the global sphere and all that. How can you add value? How can you, you know, my first global, my first, for example, my first trip out of Nigeria, I'm saying this because I'm speaking to, I think, majority, majority of Nigerian audience. Otherwise, I wouldn't use Nigerian examples. But my first trip out of Nigeria, I remember it was, I started a social enterprise where we were teaching entrepreneurship and leadership to secondary schools. And sometimes there wasn't a lot of profit in it, but we would go to a lot of secondary schools. And then I was sharing some of my work online and I was writing about it. And one guy from South Africa saw my work. And I was like, are you willing to come and contribute to the work that we're doing here in South Africa? For a month, you know, they were doing a program called the Global Scholars. That was the very first time. And all expenses paid everything. I was able to go there. And it was the start of building a coalition. It was the start of contributing. Today, when I think about things that I want to do, I can think about people across the world that I would be able to reach out to. And it is intentional. Competence. Competence is critical. It's not, it's not to build a global coalition, to have a global cause. Put in courage. You have to be competent. You have to build your skill. You have to build your ability to solve problems. This is the biggest one. Now, competence does not necessarily mean you're the only one who's going to solve the problem, but competence in your ability to be able to know what to do, be in charge, or the ability to be able to solve the problem and direction is critical. Because people see competence. Competence has global relevance, competence and excellence. Now, somebody's saying, what does it take to build global, global standards? When people see some of the work that we do, you know, some people on the continent ask me, is this something that you franchised, you know, our plan Premier work? Is this some, I, I've known a number of people asking me, were you the ones who started this? Or are you, are you franchising it from another company, maybe somewhere in the US? I'm like, no. I've, I've had several people come and say, because of that competence and that excellence, they just have a perspective that this is a global thing. So the truth about the issue is that competence plays a role in actually positioning stuff. I've also worked in the e-commerce field, for example, and I've advised e-commerce businesses. I've been part of e-commerce and stuff here in Rwanda and elsewhere and working with Alibaba. And one of the things we always realize is that many times products do not sell because there is a little bit of competence reflected in the way that that thing is packaged or positioned and put out there. And it hinders people from tapping into it. So if you're thinking about global audience, competence is a critical thing. Competence and excellence. It has global relevance. People will give you where they secure projects for people from the US, from the UK and elsewhere, whom we've never seen, just because they know and they feel that we can do the job. And that's critical. And so you have to build competence not just brand it, but actually be able to do the job. Character is critical. You know, somebody, one of, one of the persons I worked with, she wrote a, she, she, she's based in the US, wrote a, wrote a review on, on, on LinkedIn. For me, one of the things that she said was, people should not miss the opportunity to work with a person with such strong and good character and great character. I know sometimes you are aware, I'm aware of my own weakness. I'm not a perfect person. But the truth is that if somebody sees the character there, then the steps that I'm taking, it's a commitment every day. You see what I mean? Character is a commitment. That, that means the steps are registering because character is many times doing the thing that is not easy. Following through on your commitment. Of course, there's a part of honesty, which is critical, but it's also about following through, standing for, for what is right. If you look at the global landscape, people are looking to trust people to be able to do things with them. And your character more than anything is going to, if you're looking for the right kind of impact and the right kind of success, is going to sell you, you know? And it's a currency, because if there's a good character and people trust you, then they're going to want to transact with you. 
Coordination is critical. You have to understand how do you make things work? How do you make things happen? How do you coordinate people? It's critical in bringing people together. Like I was saying earlier on, you must understand what do people want? What do they want to get out of this? And how can you help everybody accomplish it? So you must also see yourself, you know, how do they put it? You must see yourself as an orchestrator of the outcomes you are seeking as a coordinator. You must keep, you must have your game plan. You must have your drawing board and you must keep going back to it consistently to be able to make sure that you're driving towards the outcomes. It's not enough to inspire people as a leader. You must have strong ability to be able to see the big picture, to be able to put people in the right places, to be able to have a plan B, to be able to many times as a leader in your coordination, you have to go to the end before people um, even get there and they see it. And the ability to be able to manage, to be able to respond to change or to cough balls. Leadership is definitely not the easy thing, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. But practically speaking, you are the person as a leader whom everybody looks to for the resources, the things to happen and all that. And you must hold it down. So you must be strong in the way that you're managing it. You must be strong in the way that you're coordinating it. For example, even a virtual event like this that Daya is putting together, it takes a lot of coordination. Some people might not understand it, but putting together something like this, getting all the speakers, getting all the, the, the letters, getting the, the, the context of the conference to them, telling them about what they need to do, following up with them, managing the time, managing everything, it takes work. And it's one of the things that if you're going to make global impact as a leader, you have to be a coordinator. If you need to learn skills in strategic management, project management, you need to learn them because it allows, at the end of the day, people see the success and everybody's excited. But the success doesn't just happen because people feel good about it, but because there's a strong coordinator behind the scenes that is making things work. Finally, like I said, it's conditioning. I know somebody's going to talk about global mindset tomorrow. But the truth about the issue is we are talking global, 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 all these things. You are, and we are, our only limits to making global impact. To the extent that we have opened our minds to be able to relate, to be able to interact. You know, I'm on a Nigerian group where I'm, I'm based. And somebody said something yesterday. They were talking about another country. And they were like, this country does not like Nigerians. You know, I've met many Nigerians that go all over the world, but they still feel that other people don't like them. They feel they have a suspicion towards other people. They still stay in their own bubble. They find it difficult to adjust. They can't adjust to the food. They can't adjust to anything. They can't adjust to the behaviors of others. They criticize others. And I'm asking the question, if you are going out of your country, if you are elsewhere, why are you criticizing others so badly? You have to open your mind. And so I find out that those people go and they go with Nigerian attitudes. Some negative Nigerian attitudes. Of course, there's a number of great Nigerian attitudes, but they go with those negative Nigerian attitudes. And so they are limited in the impact and the reach they're able to make. Most people do not understand that on a global platform, you speak global language. Your message or the things that you're doing, you have to contextualize it for the broader market. If you're going to make global impact, your language cannot be speaking to only the things that people in your local environment value. If people in your local environment value, get out of the struggle. If that's all they know. People outside might not be thinking get out of the struggle. They might be thinking make transgenerational impact, for example, in terms of their projects, or they might be thinking leverage. They might be thinking influence in another level. So you must understand that and you must expand your mind to understand what is it on the global landscape and how can I participate in that? 
For some people, what is stopping them is cultural differences. You know, they just speak to somebody who is like, blah, 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 and the person is speaking and they're like, you know what? I don't think I'm supposed to be among those people because I don't understand what they're saying. It is hard work to integrate or to become, to become fluent multiculturally. But that is the, that is the, um, that is the currency of global impact. Many people are still stuck with the way that they do things in their own way. You know, imagine somebody trying to do something global and thinks it's African time or thinks they will understand. Many people have lost global opportunities because they bring a local approach to it. They bring a local mind to it. But the key is while preserving your local road, you must deepen your global appeal, your global relevance, your behaviors and thinking have to be global. I, I cannot say much about this. I, I, I mean, there's a lot that we can say about this, but because of time, just to recap, the seven C's in global impact, of, of global impact and leadership that I just looking back over the past few years, Greco, one is the courage, two is the cause, three is the coalition, Four is the competence. Five is the character. Six is the coordination. And seven is the conditioning. How are you conditioned to think about things and to think about people and think about your environment? Leadership is powerful. Leadership can make an impact. And there's nothing as good as investing in yourself as a leader. Because when you invest in yourself as a leader, you build your courage, you know how to define a cause of a problem, you know how to build a coalition, you build your confidence, you build your character, the coordination and conditioning, everything will be positively affected. Family, business, whatever, will be positively affected. I hope that this helps you to think about how to make leadership on a global stage. I'm going to stop at this point and just see if there are questions. Right? Wow, 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 wow. This is amazing. This is amazing. If you listen to this presentation, my note is already full. If you listen to this presentation, you will see that it's a deep work. I mean, it's not just... Uh, this uh, this person is sharing from his heart, from experience, and he's saying to somebody here that uh, that global level we want to rise into is possible, and he's sharing his own story with us. This is so 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 amazing. Uh, we really really want to appreciate you. So I want you to drop your questions. Uh, our viewing center in Ondo State, we have a viewing center in Ondo State. Uh, send in your questions. We have another uh, viewing center, uh, another platform we are projecting to, which is our Facebook group. Uh, drop your question. Our team on that platform will send in your question so that we can attend to it today. Uh, thank you so much. This 7th is loaded. And I was like, wow. You just need to listen to this over and again and again, at least four times before you can get all the things that is loaded inside this thing and all that. We really want to appreciate you, sir, for Sunday at the Gunse's beautiful presentation, sir. Awesome, awesome section so far. Uh, for me, it's like you are talking to me. I don't know about the other participant, but for me, this is a life changing uh, learning and conversation uh, with you. So, can we drop those questions so that we can take questions? Then we do the final announcement and we'll close for day two. Let's put in those questions in. Okay, Farouk says, such a deep and insightful. Uh, presentation. Thank you. It's not only me that is saying deep now. Okay. Such a deep and insightful presentation. I can't help but feel that this is more where that came from, that there is more where that it came from. Thank you very much, sir. So this comment from Olada Paul Farrow. 
Uh, let's uh, have more questions. Uh, let's have more questions. Uh, this is awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, we are glad that you're doing great work across the globe now. And um, we believe so much that your story has really inspired uh, the audience here. Awesome presentation, brother and sister, I know. I suggest we draw the recorded version for us to go all over again. All right, so if you want to get certificate and the um, recorded version of this summit, you pay a token of 5,000 Naira. And uh, if you want to pay in dollars, we also have a platform for you to pay that. And uh, if you're on the WhatsApp group, you will have seen that we have been posting all this on the group for us to do, and we'll repost it again. Uh, just to say I miss uh, the day two meeting, maybe you are just joining, you will have access to the recorded version. Just do what you need to do to get that uh great and original insight thanks a lot boss uh thank you so much uh thank you sir please what is the place of volunteering in building your global portfolio okay so can you help us to attend to that yeah what okay. is the place of volunteering in building your global portfolio um, thanks for asking that, Chineze, and uh, Daya, thanks for that. And thanks for all the kind comments that you're putting out there. The truth is, volunteering is critical. I think I didn't get to share a lot of my own story, but um, there are what I call low-stakes way to getting into opportunities locally and globally. Um, there are opportunities that you can get into just by being willing to offer value being willing to volunteer and sometimes people think if he doesn't pay me if i'm not going to gain something out of it i'm not going to do it that mindset is very limiting because many of the good things out there you need to pay for them before you can get them i remember this time last year i was in qatar and i've gone for conferences like this right i was in qatar looking at the stadiums and all the building, but i actually went to be part of the summit paid my everything from registration fee to flights and all that i'm being part of that because of the learning volunteering is critical volunteering puts you out there volunteering helps you to test your skills at a low level you see for example i remember um, today, we get projects that in, in our business and learnable, we work on projects that are into tens of thousands of dollars and all that. And I remember sometime before getting there, some of the, if somebody says, I remember one of our clients today that's paying us a five-figure USD uh, for, for a project. They just reached out to me and said, hey, we have a retreat. Can you facilitate a session for us in the retreat? I said, of course. And you know, I jumped on it. They weren't going to pay me anything, but I went for it and I did the session. It was like a 45 minute session and I did it for 200 people company. They were blown, right? They were literally blown. And that led on to projects. Now, volunteering works in the same way. It allows you a platform to be able to showcase your expertise or your ability. It exposes you, it helps you to build relationships. I can't tell you how much volunteering is critical or just putting yourself out there. The truth about it is, if you're going to make global impact, be a person of value. There is value you're going to monetize, but there's also value that you will give through volunteering, you will give through contribution, you will give through helping out. When people know that you're willing to help out, then they can pay you even to help out. Of course, you have to have a business model later. You have to think about that. But to start with, really putting yourself out there, looking at the platform, I challenge you, if you're early in your global growth pro process and you're looking at things you want to do or place you want to go, find out this tip about volunteering. How can I contribute to them? How can I be a part of it? It will be your first, it might be, it might be the opportunity that takes you um, out there. So um, that's what I'll say about volunteering. Putting yourself out there through volunteering, showing up 
attending conferences, summits. Of course, the guys who are attending this summit have already, they already have the advantage because you're attending those kind of things and you're hearing um, from global speakers, right? And I think that is such kind of exposure, um, building relationships. One thing my wife said about me one time is like, oh, how do you keep up with all those relationships? You see, some people meet people globally and they meet all that. You go to a conference, you exchange contacts and all that. It's not enough. You need to nurture and build the relationships. I need to find ways to create platforms of exchange, mutual platforms of value, offer value. Sometimes the reason why people sometimes shy away from helping is that once people meet them, the first thing they are doing is, how can I take advantage? How can I leverage? No, that's a very, that's a very limiting way. Think about how can I create value? And then before you know, you win the hearts of such people can collaborate with them. But stop there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you for drawing that question out. Uh, that's the wife of a facilitator today. We recognize you. Thank you for that awesome support so far. You know, we remember those days and you're still there supporting, um, um, pushing, um, taking to global state from, one coast, from coast to coast. That is a very great one. We appreciate you. Uh, somebody says, um, okay, I missed some part of the scenes. Please, will there be a slide of the presentation? So they are asking and requesting for the slide or the presentation. I can share it with, um, I can share it okay. with it's, it's my intellectual property, but I'll share it with you. <laughs> okay. As long as you don't, as long as you don't take it and call it your work, because everything that I put there, I referenced, but I created it as well. So it's an intellectual property that I could put out and sell for value. But I'll share it with Dio, and um, he will know how to best either get it across, or I don't know, maybe it comes with the package for people who want to. Um, I think you mentioned something earlier, Dio, that people who want to get the recordings and all and certificate. So I don't know if it comes with that, but I, I will, Dio will decide what he wants to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, definitely uh, if you have order for the recording of this session, then you will get all the slides from the speakers and all the other things that you need for to the part of this session. Another, somebody said, beautiful presentations. Please, can we get, okay, we've talked about that. Ross, please, what is the best platform to start the journey of imagining a global leader? What is the best platform to start the journey of imagining a global leader? Okay, that's a good question. I didn't get to talk about this in my, presentation, but everybody has access to a platform today. Um, tangibly speaking, so let me talk about tangible platforms. Everybody has access to a platform today, which is the internet, which I'm right now in Nairobi, Kenya. My wife, Chineza, is in Kigali, Rwanda. Um, there are people who are spoken from Philippines, the, uh, or the Philippines. There are people who are spoken from the US. The, there are possibilities on a global platform. So number one is being able to put out yourself and your value on the internet. Now that might mean different things. That might mean putting on a blog. That might mean putting on social media. <laughs> you know, for example, I remember I was consulting on a project and I it was, um, the client paid for us to, to come to the US because the client is in the US. And one of the things then that they asked was, they were asking for the social, the, the embassy was asking for, one of the things they asked for your social media platforms. So they go and check it. So clearly when I was doing my interview, it was very short and very fast. It already looked as if the person knew me and you know, I too, 
Part of it is because I think the person was able to access information about me online easily. Please don't take this for granted. Create information, good positive information. Don't just post about problems or challenges or post rubbish online. Create a footprint that if people put your name in Google, for example, they will see impactful things. Write something, publish something. I told you I got to South Africa the first time. It was something that somebody in South Africa saw that I put out online. So that's important. Sorry, I think there's a noise in the background where I'm staying. If you can still hear me, let me finish this up. So in terms of the best platforms, I would say leverage online platforms to put out valuable content or to put out valuable information about yourself from LinkedIn to your social media to Facebook to a blog, it's critical. The other thing, of course, is looking around yourself. What are the platforms, physical platforms, like this platform that Gaia is putting up? I'm sure they do events and all that, and they put out platforms. I'm sure in your country, in your, in your state as well, there's maybe an American corner or there's a project. You can target some of those foreign projects and foreign opportunities. You can apply for many online. You might think so, some people, they don't get all those things because they don't even apply, they don't try. So you go to an opportunity. I know that it has um, a site where it does all this mentorship for business grants, business this. Those are platforms. And there are similar opportunities, similar platforms that actually show you sponsored opportunities for global leaders, for young global leaders. Some of those things, you just need to get guidance, apply for them, and they can be like, like the first breaking. So there are many of them. That's why I can't mention specific names. But if you go to opportunities, Opportunity Desk, Opportunities for Africans, um, Youth Opportunities, depending on your age, depending on your, 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 your focus and what you're trying to do. But I hope that some of what I've said has put some light to that. And of course, volunteering gives you a platform to showcase your leadership, right? Um, oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so, so, so much. Uh, we don't have further questions. Uh, we really want to appreciate you today uh, for what you have done in speaking from your heart and telling somebody out there that you can actually own the global stage. You can actually take your initiative, your ideas to the global stage, and you'll be able to impact lives, do projects globally, consult for global clients, and you are good to go. We want to appreciate you, Demi. Thank you so, so much for taking your time and putting a lot of uh, energy and deep work into this presentation. We really, really appreciate it. We don't take it for likely. We don't take it for granted. Thank you so, so much. Like I advise everyone here, listen to this over and over again. It's not something that you just um, listen to once, listen to it over again. My notes are already filled up here. Listen to it over and, and again. And from there, you are good to go. So I will take us through some announcement now. I will close for day two. Tomorrow is the last day. It's going to start by 4 p.m. West Africa time. And uh, we have three speakers tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow will be the final day for the sections. And uh, beyond that, there will be post mentoring activity on our WhatsApp group. So if you are not registered, You've not registered for this event, please uh, register for it. If you are on Facebook and you have not registered, but because you are a member of the group, uh, still go ahead and register so that you can be receiving emails from us. You can be getting feedbacks from us. Then you can ask questions. Uh, some of you, you are working on projects. You need uh, feedback on those projects. You need uh, collaboration, coalition, and things like that. And these are the things that you are going to get uh, from collaborating uh, with us on this project. So he has dropped some of his links on the meeting chat. Uh, you can follow him on Facebook 
at uh, okay let me just do this uh, let me uh pick this and just here on and just here it's yours okay let's just hold on i want to share the contact with us I just wanted, before I drop off there, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the opportunity. It's um, it's a pleasure to be of impact and service. Thank you all as well for listening and thank you for your kind feedback as well. Um, feel free to reach out. I look forward to collaborating and speaking with many of you. And I hope to keep the conversation going. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. We appreciate you also. Uh, you have been a role model and a mentor over time, and um, you are not uh, putting down the guard. You are climbing and moving forward, and we are glad that you are doing that for us. It's not just for you, for us, because when we see you do global things, we are happy. Because we know that, okay, I know this person and, um, you know, we were together at some point and he's doing global things across the globe. So we are also happy and um, we know that. that definitely very soon we are going to be meeting fiscally. To we don't just be online like this, you know, it's going to be and all that. So this is his uh, contact you and a website. So if you want to screenshot this, please do. Uh, if you want to read emails, uh, go visit. So for you staying up to this time, we want to appreciate you, we want to celebrate all of you because holding you to this time, in this part of the world where there is a lot of distraction, both online and offline and things like that, but you can you are still here. Uh, we had a lot of numbers when we started on the Zoom and uh, now it's dropping, but it, it has been a, a, a time, a good time uh, together. So if you have finished taking this uh, contact, we are going to take this snapshot, group snapshot, for day two, uh, we did for day one, so we're going to do for day two. Then as we prepare for that, you are going to open your video because that's what we'll do to take a screenshot together. So basically, you want the recordings for the three days, so we got you covered. Uh, we are preparing that for you, and we also have a certificate for this event. So for both certificates, and the recordings, you pay a token of 5,000 Naira. If you pay within this event, then after this event, the, you'll be able to pay 10,000 Naira to be able to assess all the resources and information that we have put together uh, from each of the speakers and things like that. Uh, another thing that uh, we also like to uh, talk about is the book. Uh, plan B Premier, can you talk about how we can access it? Uh, maybe on any of those global platforms, maybe Amazon, or if you have any physical copy in Nigeria that uh, we can go and buy, or if you sell um, soft copies online or, or things like that. Can you share on that with us? Okay, so it, once he comes back, he will yeah, be able to you share with all. He has a book, Plan B Free website. Information about that will also be there. So other announcements. Uh, if you have paid for your certificate and the recordings, it will be available for you on Monday. All right? It will be available for you on Monday. Okay, it's back now. So can you speak about your plan be premium book and now people can assess it there if there's any coaching programs around it absolutely um thanks Dio. uh the plan b premium book is a book on creating impact and income 
Uh, we just we launched physical copies in Rwanda. We did a number of events in Kenya, in the US, and all that. But the e-copy, it's on seller. I'm going to get the link and send it to you. Uh, if you want to get a copy, uh, it's a very practical book. It's, it's a workbook. It has case studies and um, uh, illustration. And so it's not a it's not a theoretical book, but it's a book that if, if you listen to my session, you will know a lot of the things that we share come out of things that you can actually practice. So it's about creating income and impact and I will share the link. We have it on seller. I just need to get the link. I would share it with Dario, and I think he will be able to forward it to you uh, later, uh, maybe on the group or to people that registered for the sessions. And then you can get the copy. You can buy the, the online copy. Uh, there's also the... Uh, there's also... There's a number of programs that we do. And um, if you follow me on IG, we're going to announce them. Um, we have a number of programs in January and February, and uh, we're going to announce them there. So uh, if you reach out to me or follow on social media, you would be able to get the announcement. But I'll share the link to the book with Daya. Thank you, Daya. Okay, that's fine and uh, nice. Uh, so we'll get the link across. Uh, Seller is a good platform, so that's a very good one. So we'll all go and buy on those platforms. Then follow him on social media so that you can have knowledge about the program coming up uh, next year that you can key into it wherever the country where you play. Okay, so... Um, like I said, that the uh, for us to get all the things we put together for this event, then you need to do uh, what we say you should do. So let's take this uh, group picture now. Uh, let's take the group picture now. So you need to open your video. You need to open your video. You know, another thing I'm sharing with you will be the fact that you need to take proper recordings of anything you are doing, any projects you are doing, you need to take records of it, all right? Very, very important because anybody that wants to look at what you are doing, these kind of uh, records are evidence-based uh, that, okay, for example, you attended this event and they asked you to come and get the certificate for a token of 2000 Naira, and you didn't see it as something serious. You know that that certificate alone that you attended a Google summit will be something that will rescue you one day when they ask you, okay, what other learning uh, platforms have you exposed yourself to? You just bring out a certificate and say, okay, I was part of this global event. Um, a speaker spoke there, these are the things they, they talked about and things like that. So we are going to um do the screenshot now okay so uh okay the book has been the link to seller has been dropped so i will also uh, save that now Okay, so we want general comments for uh, people that you would like to comment. Just wait up your hand. If you want like to say anything before we round up, you would like to say anything before we round up, you want to comment either the speakers or the events, you want to uh, give us feedback and things like that. So just wait up your hand and we will we'll give you that opportunity. Uh, the like we said, the video from the keynote speaker will do the transcription and send to us in our groups. And uh, uh, okay, the Plan B uh, book, Plan B Preneur book is on a discount at the moment. All right, is on a discount. So if you check it, you'll be able to get it at a very good uh, uh, discount. So you want to. 
take advantage of that as you do that. So if you would like to talk before we end this meeting, just raise up your hand. We give you that opportunity. So another thing um, we also want to emphasize, if you have not joined the WhatsApp group, please join because that's how you can get to me. For example, okay, we have somebody, uh, Sunday at the moon. Okay, you can mute yourself and talk. The picture has been taken. Thank you. Sunday at the moon, you can talk. You want to make comments, contributions. You want to observation and things like that. Sunday at the moon, you can mute yourself. Uh, seriously, I want to really thank you guys. They've been very impactful. They've been very, very impactful. And also, I want to appreciate the coordinator of the program. You've been wonderful. Your global mindset has been very, very appreciative, seriously. And I pray that God will keep moving you further, moving you higher, greater ground in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. We appreciate that generous comment. Thank you so much. Any other person want to comment? We want to uh, say one or two things because we are ending the summit now for day two. Any other person? Or you want to type it as a comment uh, in the comment section, you can do that before we run up. Uh, by the third day tomorrow, we are going to be giving us feedback form. Um, we'll be sending it to our groups so that you tell us how the summit has been. Uh, so far, what are the things that we did well? What are the things we need to improve on? Uh, so we'll send you that feedback then, your comment generally and all that. So what is the account details to pay the 5K into? Okay, so uh, Peter, can you drop the account details or any other details that we can uh, use for it? So that for people that are not on the WhatsApp group, they can uh, access it. So we will drop the account number now that you can pay into. So we have dropped it. You can pick it from there. So once you just make a transfer, you get back to us with your ideas. Then we will work uh, on it for on Monday. Definitely, we are going to prepare all the details. Any other questions, uh, contribution, or you want to talk about your own personal, you know, you cannot stay to this uh, time and you have an opportunity to ask me questions physically and you are not taking advantage of that. Maybe you are looking for grants, uh, support, other support and things like that. Uh, Alade, Allah me say, you are so amazing. I'm, I'm glad I'm part of it. God bless you. I will put all these teachings into practice and you will be invited to witness it as well. Yes, I'm rooting for you. I'm waiting for your testimony. I believe also that it's going to be a great one. Um, any other person that you want to talk, contribute? Okay, I joined Chorus with other participants for kudos to the team of umpires on this event thank you so 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 much